pseudo elements are elements on the page that aren't found in the HTML code. They can be manipulated with CSS that would be applied to any other element. Two special pseudo elements, before and after, can be used to generate content on the page from CSS and have many potential use cases. In this episode, we'll learn about the five different pseudo elements, generating content like text, images, attribute values and counters from CSS, and how to make complex shapes with minimal markup. There are five pseudo elements in CSS. First line, first letter, selection, before and after. These are differentiated from pseudo classes with the double colon syntax, but they're often written in CSS with a single colon for brevity. I've got a block quote of placeholder text here. I can change the color of the first line of text with first line, which even holds true when the text reflows. I can create a drop cap by styling the first letter with float and a larger font size. And I can change the color of the selection text with selection. I can add large quotation marks before and after the block quote with the before and after pseudo elements. The text gets generated from the content property and can then be styled with CSS to get the desired effect. Using before and after pseudo elements allows us to add all sorts of different content to the page. We've already seen how text content can be added to the page but we can also add images, attribute values, counters, or an empty string to just provide access to the two extra elements. Adding an image is similar to adding a background image with URL. Here we use URL as the value of the content property. I actually prefer to use background images and just provide access to the pseudo element by creating an empty string for content. This gives more control over the image as all the usual properties like background position, background repeat, background size become available. It's also possible to inject the value of an HTML attribute into the page using the content property too. When creating a print style sheet, I like to add the following snippet to output the URL of links so they can be read from the printed page. This will add the link URL after the link text for any links that aren't internal or hash links. The final special case for generated content is to insert the value of a counter variable. I found this really useful in the past for numbering complex lists of legal terms and conditions. I've got a series of headings here with a series of nested lists beneath them. I want each section heading to have a number and each list item to be numbered as a sub item for each section. For every H2, I'll increment a section counter. And for each list item, I'll increment an item counter. Before each section heading, I'll output the value of the section counter. And before each list item, I'll output the value of the item counter. Additional strings can be added between the counters to create a complex numbering system. A simplified form of this method could be used to control the styling of the numbers or bullets in list items. As each element on the page can have two extra elements, and these can be styled however we like, it's possible to make all sorts of complex shapes with CSS. When thinking of an example to demonstrate, I came across a reference of shapes on CSS tricks. One of them really stood out, and I'm going to walk through the process of how it works. Let's make the yin and yang symbol with a single HTML element. Starting with a box, 
This can be turned into a circle with border radius. Two coloured semicircles can be created using a border bottom that equals the height of the circle. The two dots are created by making two more circles with pseudo elements and placing them with position absolute. Using borders that match the colour of the semicircles, the two rounded ends of the symbol can be created. Pretty sweet if you ask me. I'm a big fan of pseudo elements. You can do a lot with them and add all sorts of visual flair to the page without cluttering up the markup.